So why do particular compounds and elements have constant chemical properties while mixtures do not? Okay, so that's a good opening question. Well, the chemical properties of a substance are defined by the chemical composition of that substance. The chemical properties of a particular thing are defined by what is inside that particular thing. Now, elements and compounds have a set composition. That is, the, thing, the atoms that make up a compound or an element will always be the same. They won't change, so that means that the composition is fixed. So either only one atom is in an element, or in a compound you have one set of elements. You don't have a variety of elements that could make up this compound. It's just one set. Now, since the composition can't change, the chemical properties of a particular compound or element can't change either, because remember, from this first statement, the chemical properties of a substance are defined by its composition. Now, since the composition can't change, obviously, the chemical properties don't change either. Now, mixtures don't have a set composition, so their chemical properties can actually vary with the varying concentration of components. Because of that variance, it gives you variance in their chemical properties as well. Now, describe one physical property that can be altered in a mixture by altering the composition of that mixture. So, a physical property that we can change if we alter the composition of the mixture. So here's an easy one. The electrical conductivity of salt water can be altered by changing the concentration of salt in the water. So if I have a lot of salt in the water, it will be more conductive than if I have very little salt. So increasing the concentration of salt increases the conductivity. Decreasing the concentration of salt obviously will decrease the conductivity as well. So that's just one example of that happening. The steel example, if we add more carbon, it becomes more brittle or if you take away carbon, it becomes more malleable. So that's another one. Those are some typical examples of things or physical properties that we can change by changing the composition of the mixture. So why are alloys of metals considered mixtures? So when we alloy metals, we actually putting, we have a molten block of metal and then we're putting in other elements to try and alter that metal so it becomes more useful to us. So alloys are simply metals mixed with other elements to alter the properties of the original metal. So in the steel case, iron is mixed with carbon to make the iron stronger, uh, and we call that steel. So the main idea is that the composition of the alloy can vary depending on the application. So depending on what we want to do, we can actually alter the composition of that alloy. For example, steel can have numerous compositions depending on the application. However, all of the compositions are referred to as steel. Okay, so I'll give you an example. There's the carbon example, putting more carbon in or less carbon. But we also have things like stainless steel. I'm sure you, you use that in your kitchen or whatever. And stainless steel is still called steel, but it's got a different composition to other steels. So, but we still call it steel. Now, therefore, alloys must be mixtures because the chemical composition is variable. You can change the chemical composition, but we still call it that same mixture of steel. So you can see that they must be mixtures because you can change them however you want. They're not fixed in their composition. So that's why we consider alloys as mixtures. What are the largest factors affecting the chemical properties of elements and compounds? For elements, the main factor affecting the chemical properties is their electron configuration. So how the electrons sit around the nucleus basically explains their chemical properties. Unstable configurations will affect the chemical properties of the element. In compounds, the way the chemical, the elements bond together the chemical bonding will be the biggest factor in determining their chemical properties. So the way the elements are actually arranged and bonded will affect its chemical properties as well. So when elements combine to form a compound, the compound has properties which differ to the properties of the elements used to make the compound. Okay, so these are quite verbose questions, but basically when elements form compounds, the compound is different to the elements that went into the compound. So explain why that's so. So when an element combines with another element, it forms a compound, obviously. And this compound has different chemical properties because its electron configuration is different to the constituent chemicals. So obviously if you've bonded things together, you've rearranged the electrons somehow, and that's caused the electron's configuration to be different, which means that obviously the chemical properties will be different. It is the electron configuration that governs the chemical properties of the material. So obviously if you've changed it, the material will have a different chemical property to its constituents. So that concludes today's lesson on basically elements, compounds, and mixtures. We've looked at what constitutes each one, and we've looked at what kind of examples do we see in everyday life. So in the future, we'll be talking about chemical bonding and why that happens, and so I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.